Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah, I am a hardware engineer, and this is my YouTube channel. I make videos on entrepreneurship, career, lifestyle, creativity, and productivity. So today's video is a building my business series. If you're new here, the building my business series on my channel is a series where I vlog me working on all my side projects, building my side businesses because I think a lot of the entrepreneur role models that I look up to, I'm only able to learn from them when they're telling their story after the fact. So I think there's value in showcasing what it looks like when I'm building these businesses, all the mistakes I made, all the thought processes I'm going through, that kind of thing. The last building my business video was on building my online store. So you should definitely go check that out. I have a link down below. Although warning, that's before I upped my video quality. So it was definitely filmed on my iPhone. This building my business video is on building my online brand called Swang Swang, which a little backstory on the name of that is my name is Sarah Wang. So growing up, my coaches always called me Swang because there were too many freaking Sarahs on the field at all times. And then there are two of them, Swang Swang, because one Swang is taken by that freaking song, if you know what I'm talking about. So that's a little bit of SEO, search engine optimization, because if you search one swing, that song always comes up. So there was a big study done by McKinsey that one of the biggest things women need right now is mentorship. And I completely echo this because especially being in a technical field like engineering, I haven't been able to find a woman mentor yet. So I've always looked to YouTube for mentorship because having a lack of mentors in my field, there are a lot of big prominent women entrepreneur figures on YouTube. And so I'm super grateful for that. The only problem was that I never found a mentor on YouTube that exactly matched what I needed, which is I was looking for someone that was in a more technical field, someone that is passionate about being an entrepreneur and being their own boss, but wasn't quite there yet and building their brand business company consciously, doing it ethically, environmentally, artistically, and also promoting equality. So promoting diversity and inclusion. So I kind of want to fulfill that role here on this platform, which is weird to say because I don't think I am a role model in this category. I'm simply just someone that's also like trying to ride this wave. But since there is a lack of this role model on this channel, I figured I'd fulfill the role in the meantime. And more of me just telling you what I learned as I'm growing up and building these businesses because I know I'm still young, I still lack a lot of experience, but I guess the value of my channel more like this series is just sharing my story. Yeah, another big part of this online brand I'm building is that our generation is moving out of the Steve Job era, which Steve Job is still an idol and someone to be admired, but the culture of big companies, successful people was to work as hard as you can, drive, 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 go, go, go. And we're moving out of that phase because we're learning to reprioritize our life. So a huge problem is all these big entrepreneurial CEO role models that have made an impact on the world that I look up to, all their interviews when they're prompted the question, what do you regret the most? A lot of them answer not prioritizing my family, my life, my marriage fell apart, I didn't spend enough time with my kids, that kind of thing. But we're moving into a new era where we're learning to reprioritize our life. All these titles like chief vice president, chief executive officer, building the biggest company, making it into Forbes 30 under 30 are all temporary happiness. And I think I used to fall into this trap where all these titles, all these achievements were my source of self-worth. Like if I had piled up all of these achievements and I call this a toxic resume effect, then I would be someone that's worthy and valuable, you know, which is what a lot of us seek to find. The reality is these titles aren't gonna give us that happiness. What gives us that happiness is a sense of purpose, a sense of community, a sense of family. So then it raises the question of, do you have to be this work, 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 drive, drive, drive in order to build a successful company like Steve Jobs has, like Elon Musk has, who's known for sleeping in his office. I think I do believe that Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, all these big leaders, they have a unique drive and work ethic, but I was talking to my mentor about this. He doesn't believe that you need to be all work in order to achieve. He's a very philosophical guy. He talks about your career as water in your hand. And if someone gave you water to hold in your hands and the harder you try to hold on to it, the more water you lose. And if you just let the water be in your hand, you'll be able to hold all that water. So yeah, I really like his style. He's very philosophical and that really um, resonates with me. So 
If that's not what you're about, then just disregard that piece of advice. Back back to building my business and building this YouTube channel. I don't think I'm ever gonna do YouTube full time. I don't think YouTube will ever be the main course of my meal. It'll always be a side dish. For me, YouTube is a way to tell my story, to bring value to a public platform. Hopefully none of you are running away at this. I swear I still want to be dedicated to sharing my story. Right now I am working as a full-time hardware engineer at a corporate company and I do enjoy my job right now but I don't see myself in this role forever. Ever since I was little I've always wanted to be my own boss and to start my own company and that is still something I really want to do. There is a chance I leave the corporate world, I go start my company, and I go back to the corporate world. But I don't want to live a life without ever experiencing being my own boss. So I want to start a small business someday, and I want to have employees, and I want to start the new wave, or just be a part of the new wave, if the wave is started before I get there, of changing the corporate culture. If I ever own a business, I want all my employees to have complete control and freedom over their time. I have no idea how that would work. Like the problem with the corporate culture right now is you have to be there nine to five and it's not very understanding of people's lives. Like I don't want to ever set a maximum number of vacation days. I don't know if this will work out. Like maybe people who own the company right now are like thinking in their heads, like you're just dreaming like crazy. Like that's not possible. Please let me know in the comments below if that's the case because I honestly have no idea. Anyways, that was a really long intro and I digress. Let's go to building my business. So for those of you that are new here, I am at home this week. So a little story behind that while I gather my stuff is that this past week I was on work travel in, in Illinois slash St. Louis, Missouri and I had to work the weekend. So now I'm taking two days off and I made a quick trip back to Michigan where home is to, to visit my family and also take two days off to kind of recoup. I'm gonna be working on my side projects full time. So I am super excited about that. This is gonna be my little workstation for the day. It's really nice because this is like the solarium part of my parents' house and there's a lot of natural light coming in despite it being a gloomy day. So when building any business, you usually write a business plan, which a business plan is a giant paper report kind of outlining a bunch of different elements of your business. And if you just Google business plan template, like I'm sure you'll find a ton. So I'm not writing a full business plan for my YouTube channel just yet because I don't think I'm quite there, but I do want to outline the biggest elements. My mission is to share, to inspire and empower, which means I want people leaving inspired and empowered, having a better idea on how to do what they want to do, feeling excited, feeling a renewed sense of purpose after watching my videos. I'm a big proponent of having a mission statement for whatever project, whatever side business you're building. And the problem that I've identified is that women lack mentorship as shown by the study done by McKinsey and that there aren't any public influencers which is where a lot of mentorship is nowadays, of women that are in the technical field and also into entrepreneurship, but doing it in the new mindset of being socially aware of diversity, inclusion, the environment, all that kind of thing. And I've outlined my customers that I'm predicting. So by understanding your customers, you're able to bring better value and understand what your audience needs. But I'm predicting that the majority of my audience are millennial or Gen Z, probably predominantly women, but also men or anything in between, that are early in their careers, interested in entrepreneurship, creative, goal-driven, and in the same phase of life I'm in, which is basically I'm trying to find my purpose and trying to understand how to live my life to the fullest. Being living life to the fullest in the traditional sense has meant like going crazy, going on a lot of travel, which that is part of it, but also living life to the fullest means stopping work when you need to and resting, enjoying life taking things slow, being mindful, all that good stuff, all those good buzzwords that you hear around these days. I'm also thinking that a lot of my audience are going to be college students that are interested in what an engineering corporate career looks like in the future or looking ahead to life in general after college. I'm also anticipating a lot of young people just interested in entrepreneurship. What I did was I built three main characters and kind of gave them a name and illustrated their interests and hobbies and that helped me better understand them. Other creators aren't necessarily your competition because people that consume those people's content are always looking for more content. So instead of listing out my competitors and my differentiated factor as compared to those competitors, I just listed out my advantages that I think I currently have, which are basically having a technical engineering perspective, being currently corporate employed, so I'm able to share a lot of learnings in the corporate world, strong entrepreneur mindset, 
because I'm catering to an entrepreneurial audience. Being creative is to make the number four because I can't put my pinky down. Driven in an empathetic way, so taking note of all these things that we should be socially aware of, like the environment, diversity inclusion, I've probably said that a million times up until this point. And also being part of that new wave of balancing work and life and making sure to be present in the moment, enjoying life as it is. That doesn't always have to be goal or achievement oriented. Another element is your niche, which a lot of people who are talking about how to start your YouTube channel emphasize that you need a niche or niche. Okay, I've looked it up. It can be pronounced both ways. Niche, niche. I must keep saying niche. I like niche more. So I disagree. I don't think you need a niche right away. In my history of starting my businesses, I've always started off offering all the things that I want to offer and then whichever one is the most popular, I will narrow down to that niche eventually. Like before when I had an online jewelry store, I sold necklaces, bracelets, rings, all that stuff, but my ear cuffs that I made were the most popular item by far. So I started building more on that, making different types of ear cuffs and I became more of an ear cuff jewelry store. So I think a niche comes naturally and much later on in the process. To help me find my niche, I like to do this post-it note exercise, which I learned from my friend Sudan. So shout out to Sudan if she's watching. We did this for our podcast when we were trying to brand our podcast, what kind of content we're trying to make there, which basically what I did was I wrote down all the videos that I want to make on post-it notes. So all the video ideas I have for upcoming videos. And then I stuck them on the wall and started to group the ones that fell into the same category together. What I've done here basically is I've written down all different types of videos that I want to make and then I've categorized them. This section here is heavily lifestyle. This section here is entrepreneurship and this section here is career slash creativity. So those are my three niches. And I ended up with three different groups. Side note, I don't know if this is an Asian thing, but I've always grown up doing this where my mom makes tea and she puts an orange peel in it. So I highly recommend if you've never done it before. Next thing on our to-do list is to make a banner for our YouTube channel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Google the pixel size of this banner and I'm gonna make it in Procreate. So I have an iPad here and before I had this iPad, I used my Surface laptop that I have for work. I don't think you're supposed to use your work laptop for side projects, but don't talk about that. Yeah, if you don't have like a digital device like this and you want to be able to hand letter and draw your banners, what I used to do before was I had a piece of paper and I would design my banner on that piece of paper and then I would use a phone scanning app. I use Cam Scanner. I would scan the photo upload it and then retouch it in either Photoshop or a free online editing platform like PicMonkey, which I don't know if PicMonkey charges anymore, but Canva is also a great website. They have a free trial and they have a ton of templates on there. So I'll link those all down below. I personally am really into digital art, so I'm going to make it on Procreate.